What's up, Fluke fans? Welcome back to the channel. After taking some time for the baby, we're back talking the brand new season of The Bear. I'm so excited, and uh, it may just be one of the best shows on television. We're going to refrain from heavy spoilers. Not the YouTube channel, just spoiling this shit. Let's do it. In this season, Carmi is trying to turn what we know from season one into a fine dining establishment, like the upscale places that he learned the ropes in. As chaos ensues, we get a behind-the-scenes look at a task being taken on that feels much bigger than even we thought at the beginning of the season, but we also get the chance for some standalone episodes that, in my opinion, are the backbone of what season two is all about, and one in particular that we're going to continue to hit on until the end of time because, oh my God, episode six. Oh my God. Oh my God. <sighs> I got to tell you, it was perfect. Series is rated TV mature for a few sexual things here and there, but mostly profanity and uh, the inside peek, the look into how a kitchen like this operates uh, is incredible in season one. And season one is something that I wasn't able to review on this channel, but then I watched. I'm like, why was this not? Why did I? I'm glad I did it before my top 10 of the year. But I do wish I had the chance to talk about it. Funny enough, my wife was actually the one that watched it first because we're obsessed with cooking shows and I've heard all about it and she comes up to me and she kind of cements the fact that I need to watch this. And I watched it and it was amazing. It was one of the best shows of last year. But I thought there was an opportunity for season two to take the craziness of it all, the in-your-face, nonstop, adrenaline-fueled, kitchen nightmare, if you will, that season one was, in the best way, and scale back just a little bit, uh, kind of focus on the emotions between the characters and some of those backstories that get more fleshed out in season two, and they did that. They scaled back. Now, some people aren't going to love that, but I do think it was the right decision. And while doing something similar in season one, I love the fact that the focus of each individual episode feels so earned, but at the same time, it makes sense as to how it plays out and why we're watching it play out. Now, let me, let me expand upon that for just a second. We see Marcus going to Copenhagen for specialized dessert training, and he's being trained by a very familiar face. I won't say who it is, this British chef. And I thought those intimate moments were beautiful. They were there to build character. They absolutely did that. I thought another episode focus where Sid tours these local restaurants with Marcus learning their practices was... Uh, was wonderful, and these are the opportunities where we get to see these characters continue to grow with each other, but at the same time, they're in their element, and you see that process where they are learning these techniques, and the ability to kind of run this type of restaurant is so different from what we saw in season one, and that background that he brings into this crew, seeing that play out was was amazing. Obviously, any moment season two with Carmi is spectacular, and there is a romance in here, and first of all, I think those very intimate scenes between the two is just handled so beautifully, so perfectly, but there's a romance that I feel as if some people are going to watch this, and you know, it's one of those subplots that could be considered tacked on, if that makes sense. It's like, we need Carmi to come out of his comfort zone and start thinking about the idea of having two things that are pulling him in not opposite directions because she's very supportive as a character. By the way, Molly Gordon is amazing, but it does feel like an afterthought in certain instances because there's so many other things pulling our attention and getting this restaurant up and running and having that 18-month timeline. They have that conversation the first episode. And it's like, yeah, we have to do this now. The money... It's not running out, but it's on the verge of running out. And this is something that everyone involved, they want this to happen. They want this to be successful, even if they don't want to admit it at first. And to have this relationship on the side, that could pull him away. But the way that that plays out, especially in the final episode, and you know, someone of that mentality feeling as if, I, I don't know if I deserve this. Also, it's taking away my attention. I should have 100% in this, and I, I don't because... so it starts to kind of bring about this dilemma, and I didn't know if they were going to go in that direction. It's kind of predictable, but at the same time, I feel like for this character, it's necessary, and I hope that makes sense. So, not a criticism of mine, but I could see how it's a criticism of people reviewing this show, but again, and maybe I'm biased, I thought it was great. It added another dimension to his character, and if you liked this relationship between she and Carmi, please let me know down below. Let me know how it added or took away from this season. Do it! Now, Carmi and Sydney, these two characters, they are the focus of this show in general. And, you know, I, I did think Sydney could have had a bit more to do, but once they add in that kind of relationship with her father, and as they're building up to this, we get a little bit more time there. 
I love her as a character. That's why I wanted to see a bit more from her. And if any character was shortchanged in this season, I don't know if she would be the main one, but where she is one of the leads, I thought she would get just a tiny bit more to do. That being said, she's amazing. Uh, let's talk about Richie. Look, I was a fan of Richie in season one. I really was. But I believe it's episode seven in season two, where we finally get to see him kind of break out of that shell, very hesitant at first. Why am I here? I'm only here because Carmi says I should be here and this is not something. But as he starts to learn, well, hone in on his craft, what he's good at, and he has a conversation with one particular character, and there are so many big names in this season, so many huge cameos. I'm not going to say who this big name was, but my God, that scene, it gave me goosebumps. It gave me chills as that was playing out. And it's a conversation that has resonated with me so much since I finished this season yesterday. And my God, what an amazing scene between the two. But to see him just in his element going around from table to table, and my God, man, that was amazing. And he was the highlight of this season for me. His character kind of stole the show, especially, maybe not the beginning, but especially once we get into the latter half of the season. The latter half is amazing. Like, I enjoyed the buildup of season two. I like seeing everyone trying to scramble. Okay, we have 18 months. Okay, we have six months. We're approaching the timeline. We have to do this. We have to do it now. And all of the complications, walls falling down. You know, characters are trying to have intimate conversations. There's one moment and a wall just... <laughs> And everyone hears what Natalie is saying to Carmi in that moment. And that was great. Natalie, another amazing character. There's so many great characters. You know, a couple that I don't want to say were shortchanged, but I think could have gotten a little bit more to do. But that being said, you know, Richie, oh my God, I loved his presence. But let's talk about the best episode of this entire series so far. And that is something that did not take place in the restaurant. That is a flashback episode. It takes place during Christmas time with the entire Brazado family. We finally get to see mom and she's preparing this huge feast of seven fishes. This is a feast that she is so passionate about. And frankly, she's putting all of her effort into this dinner, but she doesn't feel like uh, anyone else in the family is really appreciating the effort that she's putting in. So that causes conflict. But we also have all of the other family members come in, some that we know, some that we do not, and the guest stars. The only one I'm going to mention here is Jamie Lee Curtis, who plays mom, because I have to talk about the performance. And it's amazing to see that slow mental decline because she just doesn't feel like... and. That creates more of a riff, more of a divide with the family, and we see a little bit of that culmination later on in the season, man. My God. My God. It was perfect. But also some of the other smaller conflicts between two individuals in particular involving a fork. When you see uh, the show, you'll know what I'm talking about. And it's funny because Carmi doesn't get as much to do in the sequence. It's more so the other family members interacting with each other, but the guest star names are so big. I mean huge. I mean some of the biggest stars in Hollywood. It doesn't matter as much, but you see that family dynamic play out and kind of why there is that mental block there within the family members that we know to be a huge integral part of this show. And my God, the, the dinner table scene, scenes, uh, I, I can't describe how good the conflict is, how good the dialogue is, and then the way that builds and comes to a head at the end of the episode, guys. Episode 6, let me know down below your favorite episode of this show. In my opinion, Episode 6 is the best episode of The Bear that we've seen. It's that good. It is the perfect episode of television. Perfect. Everything you wanted is in Episode 6. <laughs> And it's not even taking place in modern day. <laughs> like, it's one of those... There have been so many unnecessary flashback and side quest episodes and other shows. You know, I think of Stranger Things. It happened once in Ted Lasso. This was necessary. This was perfect. Last but not least, the care and the craft behind the food sequences, you know, whether it be preparation, learning the, the stress that comes with being in a kitchen like that, the process that is, you know, the driving force for these chefs, especially in that final episode, man, my blood pressure <laughs> in that final episode, watching the camera move from character to character, trying to figure out the timing of it all. Of course, we're faced with adversities that we do not expect in that final episode, but seeing it all play, it was mesmerizing television and, you know, a foodie here, 
It's so cool to see. I love like Chef Ramsay, you know, Mythical Kitchen, all of those things. And to see something like this with these characters and the way that the filmmaking just captures that and beautiful cinematography, an amazing score, music that gets you hyped. I, I'm just, you know, the soundtrack. I could talk about the soundtrack all day. It was great in season one. It's great in season two. I may prefer the soundtrack in season one. Uh, it didn't play as big of a role here, but the score kind of makes up for that. And the filmmaking in general, the only thing I'm like, ah, oh, it's I'm not used to watching television shows. I'm used to watching like streaming television. So the ad breaks always kind of throw me off. But that's just, that's not an issue with the show. It may affect the pacing every now and then, but you have to have commercials. And FX shows, they're built for that. Before I give you my score, who is your favorite character in The Bear? What's the best performance in Season 1? If you've seen Season 2, which one is better? Thank you guys for your patience. I'm uh, trying to be a good dad. It's hard. <laughs> God. But if you want to drop a like, a thumbs up on this video, that would be amazing. The Bear is the best show on television. Season 2 not only adds so much in terms of complexity and intrigue, but the way these characters continue to develop is perfect. Our two main characters are top-notch, but Richie steals the season. Episode 6 is an all-timer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's so messy. It's one of my favorite things I've seen this year. I'm going to continue to talk about how this season played out, and I didn't even really talk about the fact that I love food. I love food shows and the intimate moments of cooking that we got in season one, while not as many in season two. It's more about the growth of the characters. Uh, those worked extremely well. The filmmaking. I didn't need, man. There's <laughs> so much to talk about. Anyway, thanks for watching. We're talking Asteroid City this weekend. I'll see you soon. Woo! Yeah, baby!